Hey, how's it going, my dudes? Yes, it's uh, it's actually been a while since I've actually posted. Not really posted anything, because I just put up a video like about five or six days ago about um, Bumblebee coming into Walmart. And, oh, and I think I should definitely... Come here. Come here. This is my kitty. This is my kitty angel. Say hi, Angel. She doesn't really feel like talking. So, this video is going to be actually since since I actually did complete Kingdom Hearts 3 for the channel. Except the only thing that I have left to do, but I will put it in there in, in, in the upcoming matter of days, right? I'm going to be doing it in the upcoming matter of days. I'm actually going to be putting in the epilogue and the secret ending. Hashtag spoiler alert before you watch any of that. And because of it, um, the epilogue and secret ending is actually a... Uh, well, that one, the epilogue and secret ending is sadly a... Well, it's not really a spoiler warning, but... It's going to be bad because it's going to be having my, my camera quality instead of like, you know, just recording from the PS4 because it's a block scene that, I, that it enters. So, uh, heads out to that. Um, I just wanted to make this video as a reference to the fact I have yet to post my review for Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, it's actually my going to be my very first review um, for a game. Uh, there, I mean, then again, you know, I can't really say I've actually, like, I should have done a review for my Life is Strange series, like, both of them, both series, for Before the Storm and the first one, because I technically did complete those ones on the series, as, on the channel as well, but I haven't really gotten a chance to get to it. So, without further ado, um, I'm going to roll my intro. And we are going to get started on this Kingdom Hearts 3, my Xeno Hearts review for Kingdom Hearts 3. Let's roll the intro, and I'll tell you all about it. Hash, spoiler warning, spoiler warning, putting it right there. Major spoilers, what I'm about to say. Roll the intro, and let's kick it in. Yes, so we're back. Um, so, the Kingdom Hearts 3, the game that we've been so eager to play for about 13 years since it's been since it was announced at 2015. It was announced in the 2015 E3, I believe it was. Um, but we've been waiting for it since Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, which was around 2000. Five, I believe, because I think Kingdom Hearts 1 came out in 2002. So, yes. Um, but diehard Kingdom Hearts fans have only been waiting for it for about... Four or five years. Ever since 2015 when it was announced. Because any true Kingdom Hearts fans know that we still have, we had Dream Drop Distance, Birth by Sleep, Recoded, Rechain of Memories, Regular Chain of Memories... Dream Drop Distance HD, I don't know if I said that. We had 0 0.2 Birth by Sleep, um, A Fragmentary Passage, which gives us a glimpse into how the mechanics for Kingdom Hearts 3 is actually going to work. Um, but getting on with that, getting on with that, along with my Kingdom Hearts 3 review, first off, I want to say thank you Square Enix for and Tetsuya Nomura for finally, finally releasing this masterpiece. I actually cannot express my gratitude enough for this. It's absolutely a blast um, to be able to have officially played this game. I'm not actually, I'm not done with it yet. I still have yet to do a bunch of other stuff. All right, I have a bunch of other stuff to do. Um, like I have to get the Ultima. I, I've already got all the secret photos. The Mickey Mouse ones, um, which was a real, a real pain. I have yet to get all. I've I've got all the secret photos. I have yet to get the treasure chests, and all that other stuff. Um, the Ultima weapon, uh, the battle portals, 
and all that other good jazz. My cat's rolling around on the carpet. She likes the carpet. Um, aside from that, um, the so uh, from the tutorial world it is actually pretty decent. You know, you have the deep dive world and all that other good jazz, and it's actually really, really cool. Exactly how they enhance. They go from little Sora from Kingdom Hearts One in the Kingdom Shader and the brand new Unreal Engine. Like, in all honesty, I on a side note, I would really love it to see if they could do that, like, remake just Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 with the Kingdom Shader on the Unreal Engine 4, if physically possible. I would love to see that happen. Anybody, like, like anybody comment down below if you also would like to see uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 remastered for the Unreal Engine 4 with the Kingdom Shader, like, like what they did with Kingdom Hearts 3. But then again, we might even, even if that was the case, we'd probably end up seeing like waiting like another two or three years for that. But anyway, um, aside from the tutorial, the worlds. Let's get started with the worlds now. The worlds. Uh, my all favorite, my all favorite one, my all time favorite world in Kingdom Hearts 3 is definitely Big Hero 6. Um, no, actually, aside from that, probably Frozen. Honestly, Frozen's probably my biggest um favorite big hero 6 easily number two um i honestly like the mechanics of the frozen world i don't really like the frozen keyblade i'll be honest the frozen keyblade didn't really interest me as much as i wanted it to um aside from that uh the story the story wise of the frozen world and all the other worlds are very good very very pleasing very pleasing to me um, especially like, you know, Twilight Town. Um, let's see, for the worlds that were there, they were Olympus, which was a very emotional one, because, you know, like having Hercules at the very ending of the game saying like, yeah, I finally know where I belong, and then he doesn't even want to live up on Olympus, he wants to, because he knows he can visit them anytime he wants to. Henceforth, what I think that in Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be the very last time we're going, to, we're going to Olympus. In my honest opinion, I honestly feel like Olympus is going to be the very last... Um, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3's Olympus is going to be the very last time that we see Hercules. Because I'm pretty sure now, I'm pretty sure they're going to be focusing on Pixar worlds now that they got approval. And like, in all honesty, for other Disney worlds, I can see them, they can do Toy Story again. Uh, Frozen 2 is coming out later this year in November, as per announced. Um, what else could they do? Um, they could they could do Pirates of the Caribbean, I guess, if they wanted to do the Fountain of Youth and something like that with Blackbeard. Uh, that's on them, though. That's on them, in all honesty, to do. Big Hero 6, uh, I don't know anymore if they could interpret any more of that. Uh, let's see, the Hundred Acre Wood. Wood, Hundred Acre Wood is just a basic mini game. I honestly, that one wasn't really. I, I'll be honest, it was a lot interesting. The mini games were fun. Um, one thing, uh, I actually didn't really like. It was the shortest world. They could have like contributed. I mean, heck, even Kingdom Hearts 2's like Hundred Acre Wood, like was a lot longer than the Kingdom Hearts 3's one. Um, but, um, Pirates, let's see, the worlds that they, Monstropolis, Monstropolis, I've yet to do that one, and Tangle. Monstropolis, um, you know, my opinion, the first time around, Monstropolis is actually pretty annoying, because, like, the Unversed feel like they're high powers, or high powered, overpowered, to me, anyway. When I was playing my first time playing through it, it was actually real, sh it was shit, it was utter bullshit. I got wrecked at least. No, actually, no, no. I did not. I did not die. I came close to it, but I actually didn't because I had some high potions and stuff, and I was waiting for fucking Donald's slow ass to heal me. Ugh, it was a pain in the ass. Um, but I really liked it. I liked that they tried to do so much comparison for the actual movie part of the Monsters Inc. They definitely got that. 100% correct in my book. They even sound exactly the same. I know that I don't think they're the same actors that they use for voice actors, what they use for the original Monsters, Inc. world. Um, 
<coughs> but that's all that. Uh, Tangled wise, uh, they, I'm pretty sure they use the same voice actors as what they did for Rapunzel and Flynn um, and Mother Gothel and stuff like that. Point one book in my percent, uh, the fact that Marluxia, they perfectly executed Marluxia's role in that movie to make it seem like it's actually a decent part of it. I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, let's see, what else are we doing? Let's see, Twilight Town. If we're going by just, there's eight Disney Worlds. Let's see, there's 100 Acre Wood, uh, Monsters, Inc., Tangled, Toy Story. Yes, Toy Story. That's... And then it would be Big Hero 6, um, Olympus, Pirates, and uh, I don't know. I forgot what the other one was. But Toy Story is a very, very good world. Very good world indeed. I give that, that one's probably definitely number four in my book. It's definitely, in the, it's definitely the fourth best world that they made. Uh, with Frozen being number one, Big Hero 6 being number two, Pirates being number three, and... And uh, Toy Story being number four. Um, Toy Story is definitely a really great world to explore. Uh, I'll be honest, when I was first playing through it on my offline, um, on my main on my main playing playthrough, not really getting it to the other one because I, like I said on before I started recording Kingdom Hearts, my on my Kingdom Hearts, I think Kingdom Hearts three unboxing video. I explained that I wanted to do a quick playthrough for myself before before actually going live with it, and I did. Um, first time around, I didn't actually know what I was doing. Um, that's why in the um, live stream that I was doing throughout the whole series, I knew exactly where to go. I knew exactly what to do because I had because I'd done it prior to doing it. Um, I wouldn't really call that cheating. I would just call that you know. I guess cheating, I guess, um, or knowing in advance of what to do. It's more like hinting, kind of giving yourself hints about what to do. Um, but along with that, all the stories for the worlds are fantastic. All of them are. Um, like, for example, in the Big Hero 6 world, the Dark Baymax. Oh, my God, it really hit home. It really hit home because the Dark Baymax world, uh, or the not the, ugh, scratch that, the Dark Baymax event and it turns out it's actually the original Baymax that was turned into a heartless by Ruffleku. Um and it was oh it was it was a pain in the ass. It was a pain in the ass. Um but big things that I absolutely freaking loved the most about Kingdom Hearts 3 was its main story. Um like the top five moments that I gotta say it's it, it like um Ventus waking up. I absolutely love that. I definitely got emotional when I had to fight Aqua, or as she's known as in the Dark World, anti-Aqua. I didn't, I didn't want to spank that Aqua ass. I didn't want to spank no Aqua booty, but I had to do it in order to get her back to the realm of light. I had to, and I got emotional when she started crying and all that other stuff. And I was, and then Riku was just like, "You're in the realm of light," and I'm just, just like, "Yeah, yeah, we got our girl back. We got our girl back." And then immediately after that, it was just like, "I'm automatically like no rest for her. There ain't no rest, rest for the weary." Automatically, we had to go and go save Ventus's ass. Um, that one, Ventus. I was actually very, um, like very good about Ventus. Um, Ventus was actually a very good person to actually, like, save. And one big thing I'm actually really, really fu like, funny and fond about is when Sora meets Ventus for the first time. I'm surprised he does not say anything like he's like, oh, man, yeah, you, you don't look anything like Roxas and all that other shit. But when they get back to Master Yensen's tower and Kyrie and Axel or Lee are done when they're training oh axel points it out axel points the fact that he says like oh man why does ventus look like roxas or is it roxas that looks like ven and all that other stuff and then he gets uh, like hey, everybody's got to get it everybody's got to get it memorized got it memorized and then immediately afterwards we have no time to rest we go immediately go straight to the keyblade graveyard 
and all shit starts to die down because everyone dies. Like, not even about like 10 minutes as soon as you get to the Keyblade Graveyard. As soon as it happens, everyone fucking dies. Everyone does. But luckily, we saved them. We saved their asses with Sora, thanks to Kyrie. And then you fight all the organization members. You fight them all. And look, my cat's right over there on the TV stand. Angel! Gotta get, gotta get her down. Oh, look. Anyway, getting back to it. Uh, let's see, what else do we have to do? Um, yes, each organization fight, the best one I gotta say is definitely with Syx. Um, mostly because we get to get our boy Roxas back. We get to get Roxas! And, all, and also Shion as well. We also get to rescue Shion. Um, because... Roxas's words within Sora coming out his like Roxas's voice coming out of Sora uh, triggers Shion to go back to the realm of light, knowing she was a puppet for a, as a replica for the or new, real organization thirteen. Then immediately after all that shit happens, immediately afterwards, as soon as all the organization battles, we go back up top for the final battle, not the final final battle. But the one before it with young Xehanort, Ansem, and Xemnas. And oh my god, they definitely die human deaths. Well, they don't really die, but they go back to normal. Just like how like Xemnas, as soon as you beat him, he's just like, Oh man, oh man, oh my heart knows how to feel. And all it feels is just loneliness and all that other stuff. The thing that Ansem says, though, really hits me, because I'm pretty sure what Ansem says to Sora is definitely gives him a key thing for Kingdom Hearts 4 or, or the upcoming Kingdom Hearts game and all that other good and all that other good stuff. So in all in all honesty, aside from Zen, uh, Ansem giving Sora a piece of advice about the upcoming future. Luxord also does that in the labyrinth part of the final battle where you fight all the organization members. Luxord gives Sora a special card. He calls, according to Luxord, he calls it a wild card. No idea exactly what that means, but I'm going to say that it's a very important piece that's going to help Sora later on in the future. Um, and then immediately after that, um, as soon as you beat all three people... Um, triggers a cutscene, and then immediately after that, it's uh, oh boy, it's 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 crazy at the fact that immediately after that, um, we like Zemna, like or no, Master Xehanort fucking slashes down Kyrie right in front of Sora, triggering to get the final 13th dark keyblade that Xehanort needs in order to open Kingdom Hearts. Because he he get he gets he gets the keyblade, and then automatically after that, bam! Like we have all, every single one of the seven guardians from previous to new to old, keyblade wielders and all that other stuff. We got we got the Wayfinder trio. We got Terra, Aqua, and Ventus, and then we got you know the Sea Soul trio: Axel slash Lee, Ventus, and um, no. Roxas, Axel, and Shion, and then we have Sora, Riku. I can't really say Kairi because she's because she got slashed to death. Not really sure if she's dead. Maybe her heart's just sleeping. And Mickey. And then all of a sudden it has just like that friggin' opening for Dream Drop Distance from where Sora swings his friggin' keyblade and twirls it into the sky. And then bam, they find a way to get to this mysterious place called Scala and Kylum. Where Xehanort is actually there. And let me tell you something, boys and girls, and old men and dogs and whoever's watching this video. Scarlet Kylum is basically just a cutscene world because you don't really get to explore much of the area. This jumps you straight into the freaking battle to fight Xehanort. First one is this freaking uh, weird buddy type shit that he fights or that he summons, like the past Keyblade wielders. And then immediately after that, you're thrown into a battle with Armored Xehanort. And then as soon as you beat him, you're on to the main fight. And the main fight, I, I'll admit, I was choking up a little bit because I, I knew it was the final battle. And, 
and I really didn't, and I really did not want Kingdom Hearts 3 to end like that. But I ended it. I be I slapped that Xehanort ass around, and then immediately afterwards, immediately afterwards, we were triggered to a cutscene of Master Ericus and Xehanort playing their chess game, and then it goes back to say that Z uh, Ericus tells Xehanort that you never uh, what does he say um you, like that he might be surprised. And there, there's more to light than meets the eye. And then, oh boy, Xehanort was... And it turns out that actually Xehanort wasn't always evil. Um, a big thing, a big question that I'm still having that Kingdom Hearts 3 didn't really explain, but I'm hoping it does in the next one, is how did Xehanort get his amber eyes? Because when he was younger, he had like silver eyes or something like that. So how he got... I'm, I want to say that the, it's probably the darkness... But I don't think, because I don't think darkness can physically change someone's eye color to amber. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. By all means, if anybody knows, comment down below if you know the answer to why Xehanort's eyes, like, change from silver to his golden eyes or some shit. And then immediately afterwards, after the final thing, and it triggers that final scene, it triggers that final ending, which was blocked that I couldn't record, but I recorded it on my phone, which is what I'm going to have to do for my, for the epilogue and the secret ending, but, and then immediately afterwards, uh, you know, they're all playing on the beach and whatnot, and everybody gets a happy ending, except there's one big motherfucking secret. Sora disappears before we get to get that 100% Sokai moment that we've always wanted with Sora and Kairi because like they're on the friggin tree branch about to get it on you know what I'm saying they're about to they're about to make some they're about to make some magic happen and immediately after immediately before that happens Kairi starts crying and then Sora just ups and fucking vanishes where he goes I have no fucking clue but that's but that's something to be like you know I guess not all the like and like Tetsuya Nomura, actually, I'm pretty sure Post um, said in an interview somewhere, I think he said, um, like, we're going to be wanting more as soon as, like, we actually complete Kingdom Hearts 3, and damn sure we do. Although, I'm kind of satisfied where I am with Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I'm not actually, I'm not done with it, but I, st I still got a whole lot more to go. But I know that I'm greatly satisfied, and I'm pretty sure I can wait a couple more years before we receive the next Kingdom Hearts game. Um, I'm actually really am. Um, but review all around, review all around. Unlike IGN, unlike IGN, you want to know what I'm going to rate this Kingdom Hearts three for the 13 year journey and this epic fucking conclusion to the Xehanort saga. I'm going to give Kingdom Hearts three a whopping 11 out of 10. That is my score for it. I'm not going to like no negative reviews. But like I can say, like I wish I could say that there's any that there was some things in Kingdom Hearts three that you know just like bugged me, but nothing did. Nothing did. The thirteen year journey was definitely worth the wait. All right, that's what it was. It was worth the wait, and I'm greatly, greatly satisfied with my experience playing with it. I am. So IGN, you can suck it. My Kingdom Hearts 3 review, I'm giving it an 11 out of 10, nothing less, nothing more. It's perfectly fine with me. This has been Xeno Heart 13. This has been my review of Kingdom Hearts 3, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace, guys.